as we continue <clears throat> on Hammurabi's uh, epilogue, I basically want to pick up where we left off on this video. As we look at where we have been, Hammurabi is talking about the future days after his reign. And the king who would appear in the land, he is saying, the words of justice which I wrote, let him observe. And the law of the land which I made, the decisions which I cut, let him not change. So he's driving home the fact. He wants things to continue as he has done. My statutes, let him not dismiss. If that man has insight and uh, if he wants to maintain the order of the gods, then give attention to the words which is on my stele, which I wrote. And that's where we left off. I believe we're on line 80, where he's now going to talk about the conduct and direction and the law of the land, which I put in order, the decisions of the land which I cut, may this stila show to the future king, and may his black-headed people, uh, which is a way of describing the Sumerian and Akkadian people, let him guide aright, and their law let him give, which is really the ordinances that I've made, let him cut for them. From his land then, the wicked and the evil, let him root out the flesh of the people, let him make good. And Hammurabi then concludes by saying, Hammurabi, king of justice, whom Shamish granted laws to him, I am this one. My words, he says, are choice, my deeds, a, there's no contender. And uh, to the wise, uh, to, the, to those that aren't wise, they are empty, but to the wise, they are brought forth for praise. So this is where we will go. And so we pick up in line 80, Kipsan Ridam Din Matim Sha Adinu. Purushe matim sha aprusu narum shu likalim shuma salmat kakadishu lish tasher and so forth. Uh, let me just go through that uh, phrase by phrase grammatically. What I read we could translate in the conduct and the direction, the law of the land which I put in order, the decisions of the land which I cut, <clears throat> may this stela show to him. And let me just go back then and look at the grammar in uh, line 80. Notice it reads, Kipsum ridam din matim. Uh, Kipsum, by the way, means <clears throat> It's a noun, notice the am um ending. It's a noun accusative singular from kipsu, meaning behavior. And ridam also is accusative singular from ridu, conduct or direction. Dean is an accusative singular noun in construct from dinu with genitive singular matim from Matu, the law of the land. And so these are all accusatives. And then we go on, line 82, Sha Adinu, which I enacted. Notice Sha is the relative pronoun and Adinu is the G preterite subjunctive, first person singular from Dianu to administer justice or to give judgment. Notice the Shah here, again, introduces the subjunctive of this G preterite. Uh, first person singular is indicated by the A uh, prefix, just like in Hebrew. So which I enacted, then the decisions of the land, 
Kurusematin, uh, let him uh, keep, which I cut. Notice Paruse uh, is the accusative plural from Purusu, and it's in construct with the genitive singular Matin. So the decisions of the land, of the land, Sha Aprusu, which I cut. Notice Aprusu is the G preterite subjunctive from Parasu, to cut or decide. So the decisions of the land which I cut, may this stila show to him. Narum sha likalim shuma. Notice narum is a noun masculine singular with the pronoun sha, and likalim shuma is the G precative. Here we have that li prefix showing we're looking at a precative. G precative, third masculine singular, followed by the personal pronoun shu and the conjunction ma. Hammurabi believes his stila will show a future king the right decisions of the land. And he will be able to lead the black-headed people correctly. Notice line 86, Salmat Kakadishu, his black-headed people. <coughs> Notice Salmat, meaning black ones, and Kakadishu is a genitive plural from Kakadu, with the third masculine singular pronominal suffix in the shu, literally the black ones of head. And this refers to the people of Hammurabi's kingdom. Then we move on uh, to line 87. Lishtesher, let guide aright. Let him guide aright by following the, the, my uh, teaching. And notice this is a shin t precative, third masculine singular from the verb asheru, to be right or straight. So here we have the shin uh, precative. Actually, it's the shin t precative, third masculine singular, uh, from a shadow to guide a right. And then as we continue, then Shina Liddin, their law, let him give. <coughs> Notice then Shina is an accusative noun from Dinu, law, and it's in construct with Shina, third person plural, pronominal suffix. And Liddin, is the G precative, let him give. There we have that precative again, uh, almost like your jessive in Hebrew. Let him give, masculine singular from nadanu, to give. I think of Hebrew natan. And uh, it's interesting as we look at some of these uh, parallels, notice the N has dropped out. Uh, and just like often in Natan, the noon, especially in the imperfect, will assimilate. And it will be assimilated by progressive assimilation, like yitain, uh, yintain becoming yitain. Well, here the in drops out. So let him uh, give their law and then the decisions. Notice line 89. Purushashina, uh, uh, their ordinances, is a noun accusative singular from uh, Parushu. And notice uh, the A ah gives it away as accusative, and it's used with the personal suffix, third masculine plural, Shina. So their ordinances <laughs> let him cut. And notice Liprus is a G precative again, third masculine singular from Parasu, to cut or decide. So let him decide to follow my uh, laws is really what Hammurabi is saying. And then 
that is the future king that would come after him. Then in line 91, Inna Matishu Ragam. Inna is a preposition and Matishu is a noun genitive singular from Matu. Notice the Inna is introducing the genitival a case and Mati with the E is looking at a genitive singular followed by Shu, the third person pronominal suffix. And then we move on. The ragam is the accusative singular noun, meaning the wicked. So in the land, then he's going to go on. The wicked, utsinam lisuch, the wicked. And notice, uh, sinam, <clears throat> the wicked and also those that are going to, uh, let me just get the, uh, actually the wicked sinam means evil. And so uh, from the land, the wicked and the evil, let him root out. In other words, by my laws, Hammurabi is saying, he'll be able to root out the wicked and the evil from his land. That is that future king that would come. And so again, we have the accusative, <clears throat> A case in Sinam, a singular, I'm giving it away as accusative, and Lesuch is a G precative again. There's a lot of precatives moving through here. A third masculine singular from Nasahu. Again, that in, sort of like a first in, like a pay noon in Hebrew, uh, is basically dropping out here. So let him root out. And then as we continue in 93, he goes on to say, Shir Nishishu, the flesh of the people, Litiv, let him make good. And so as we look at this, Shir Nishishu is the noun shir, Shirum. And it's in construct, notice with, Nishishu. So Shirum, we, we drop off the um, uh, and then we have Shir in construct with Nishishu. And Nishishu is the genitive singular uh, from Nishum with the pronominal suffix third masculine singular in Shu. So the flesh of his people, let him make good. And notice in the next uh, word, uh, litiv. Here again, we have a G precative, third masculine singular from tiabu, with the macron accent over the A, to make good. And so the flesh of his people, let him make good. And then as he continues in line of 95, he says, Hamarapi, Shar Misharem, Shashamish, Kinatem, Ishru Kushum, Anaki, Anaku. Hamarabi, King of Justice, whom Shamshu granted laws to him, I am. It's almost like this I is emphatic at the end here. I am that one. Uh, and it's sort of interesting my mind uh, is reflecting on Psalm uh, 2 and where the Lord is putting up the king. And uh, he then, Asapla uh, Elchok, Adonai Amar Elai, Beniata, Ani, Hayom, Yeliticha, you are my son. I today have begotten you. There, Ani, uh, is emphatic because we wouldn't need it with the verb. Asapra el hok Adonai Amar Eli, Bani, you are my son. Ani Hayom Yeliticha. Yeliticha, we have the first person uh, suffix added to uh, the root of the verb. So, but Anohi, I, I, or excuse me, Ani, I, is emphatic. And so here it looks to me like the emphatic aspect comes at the end of the phrase. Uh, shar 
Mishadim, king of justice, whom Shamish, the sun god, granted laws uh, to him, I am. And so I'm wondering if that's not a way of emphasizing himself again in putting I at the end of the clause. So as we go back, line uh, 96, after talking about how he can make good the flesh of his people, Shar Misharim, king of justice, notice Shar is from Sharum, we drop off the um, and it's in construct with Misharim. So king of justice, Misharim is genitive singular from uh, Misharum. And then we go on, Shar Shamish Kinatim, which Shamish, uh, and then we have uh, commandments, which Shamish, uh, laws or commandments, we could translate this laws, granted to him, I am. Notice kinatim, <coughs> uh, laws, is, we, first of all, we have sha, the relative pronoun, shamish, the name of the sun god, and then kinatim. Notice kinatim is the genitive feminine plural from the noun kinu to command. The feminine plural is indicated here by the long at with the macron over the a and the in uh, suffix showing that we're looking at a genitive plural, which shamish commands. And uh, then we have ishru kushum anaku, ishru kushum anaku. Notice ishru, ishru kushum is the G preterite subjunctive again followed by, uh, following the sha, uh, subjunctive, third masculine singular from sharaku, to grant. And now we also have the suffix shum, which is the dative here, to him, which uh, shamshu granted to him, I am. And anaku is the personal pronoun. I think he's making that emphatic here by concluding the phrase with I am that one. And then as we go to 99, my words are choice. Uh, my deeds has no contender. Notice awatuya uh, nashka. My words are choice. Awatuya is a noun masculine plural from awatu with the pronominal suffix ya first person common singular or first common singular pronominal suffix my so my words are choice and naka is a g stative plural and so my words are choice words stative plural a g stative plural and then epishit tuya my deeds uh, there's no rival Notice, uh, epshetuya is a noun nominative plural from epshetu with a first common singular pronominal suffix again in ya. So what he's saying here in line uh, 11, my deeds has no contender. Shananam or shaninam, notice shanim, shaninam, is the accusative singular again from shaninu. Uh, again, the am ending showing accusative singular and rival is the meaning of <clears throat> this noun. So it has no rival. Uh, that is, my deeds has no rival. And notice ul isha, have no. Ul is your negative particle and uh, we have a g preterite in isha third masculine singular from ishum, meaning to have. So my deeds, uh, a contender has not. There's no contender. And then to the not wise, they are empty, but to the wise, they are brought forth for praise. Ela ana lab chasim rika ana imkim ana tanadatim Shoots up. And <clears throat> let's just finish that if we could. Notice in 103 to 104, 
Ella anela chasim rika. To the not wise, they are empty. Chasim is the genitive singular noun again from chasum, wise, and the negative particle la means not, uh, like low in Hebrew. And rika is a plural stative. They are empty from riaku. Uh, so, in other words, to the not wise, my laws seem empty. However, to the wise, ana imkim ana tanadatim shutsa. To the wise, for praise, they are brought forth. In other words, the wise will bring forth praise concerning uh, my teachings, Hammurabi is saying. Imkim is the genitive singular noun, wise. Again, notice the im ending showing a genitive singular. Ana is the preposition for taking the genitive, and tanadatim is the genitive plural from the noun tanatum, meaning praise. Notice again, we have that long at showing that we're looking at a genitive plural, and we have the im ending. And then finally, the last uh, verb is shutsa. And when you look at that, you have the sheen here showing that we're looking at a sheen stem. And it is a sheen stative plural from watsu to uh, come out. In other words, to the wise, they are brought forth for praise. They are brought forth for praise, or they come out for praise. And that uh, what has happened here, the W in this weak verb has dropped out and we have shoot saw, they are brought forth for praise. And this is from watsu, sort of like really uh, yatsa, uh, to bring forth uh, in Hebrew, we have uh, historically vatsa, to bring forth. And uh, I'm reminded of a text that I was just looking at in Psalm 42, where we have in the Hebrew, uh, yotzi, uh, that is, he will bring forth justice to the nations. And in that great text that I just worked on in Hebrew grammar, it is interesting to me that the New Testament applies that to Christ who brought forth gentleness in the healing of the man with the withered hand in Matthew chapter 12. And so the same uh, peyod form is used in a hyphial form there, uh, as I recall. And so here we have a sheen, sort of a causative uh, idea that we look at here for praise they are brought forth. And he's looking at his laws, at what he's written. And if you really are a wise person, you'll follow what I am saying, Hammurabi is saying. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, he goes on then to say that if that man does that uh, and he respects my laws, he does not dismiss them. Uh, and my statutes, he does not change that man will be a king of righteousness as myself. And uh, Shamish will make his scepter long, or may he make his scepter long, and his people, may he shepherd in justice. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, this really brings the conclusion of nine videos in looking at Akkadian grammar in Hammurabi's epilogue, and I'm hoping that it will help uh, bring forth a greater understanding of Akkadian. I would encourage the listener to go back to the first uh, video and then follow through and look at the deductive grammar that we talked about in the first video and also begin to work through a deductive grammar along with the inductive work that I am doing, because this is a very, can I say, sort of an easy read 
in Hammurabi's epilogue. There are harder texts in poetry and so forth, uh, vocabulary-wise, just like in Hebrew. But I would just encourage you to go back and work through the deductive elements of grammar and then read through uh, my videos. And hopefully, this will help uh, revive Akkadian if you've had it in the past, uh, maybe spark an interest to study it. And uh, my hope is that even uh, ministers and seminary students will have an interest in it uh, because to me, the languages are important. And uh, really, Akkadian is sort of like the foundation of you know, the background, understanding the Hebrew, the Semitic languages, and so forth. But I'm seeing more importantly for me, understanding its parallel and contrast with uh, biblical Hebrew. So thank you for listening to this tape. I hope it's been helpful. And uh, I've enjoyed uh, sort of refreshing my own uh, background or my own studies of Akkadian that I did uh, early on in my PhD program. Thank you for listening. I hope this has been of some help.